Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss the unit two review. So I'm going to go through this um, assignment here. And there are 32 problems. So we'll see how long it takes me to move through that. If I need to split the video up into two parts, I will. Um, but let's go ahead and start working on it. So for number one, it says for us to find the distance formula or the distance between these two points. So to do that, I am going to need to use my distance formula. And so the distance formula, um, and I do wanna point out that you will be given a um, note sheet for the, um, for the test. So I think, I thought I put it in this folder, but it doesn't look like I did. Oh, there it is, no. Here it is, U2, unit two formulas. So I go ahead and open that up. I can um, open this up back and forth as I need it. So let me get this one up and then I can pull up my formula. So the distance formula is going to be this formula here in this box. And so this is the formula that I'm going to use. Um, let's go back to our um, unit here. So I'm gonna do the square root, then the X value of the second point minus the X value of the first point squared, plus the Y value of the second point minus the y value of the first point squared. So I end up with negative six squared plus eight squared, which is 36 plus 64, which equals the square root of 800, which is a nice number. Square root of 100 is just 10, okay? So I'm gonna type in 10 here for my answer. Now, as I move on to number two, okay, this one says, consider the following two points. We have one, one, and we have nine, seven. So it says wants me to plot the points. So one, one would go here, and then nine and seven would be there. And then if you're not sure if you plotted them in the correct spot, you can click on these drop down arrows and it will tell you those coordinates, okay? And so if you happen to um, have an issue with being able to click things in a certain spot, you can kind of click it somewhere in the general area. And then, um, let me delete that one. Or let's say I delete the, the correct one, okay? And I just typed this one in general spot, but I go and look in its coordinates and its coordinates do not match what I have on my paper. So if I correct that coordinate and I hit enter, um, it should change the location of it. So see how it did move it downward, okay? So you can fix it even if you're not able to like use the mouse to get it in the right spot, okay? Um, then it says find the distance between those points. So I, I'm gonna use that same formula like I did in the previous problem. So the second X value minus the first X value squared plus the second Y value minus the first Y value squared. This gives me eight squared plus six squared, which gives me 64 plus 36. Coincidence that I get the same 100 and so I get the same um, 10. So I'm gonna type in 10 units, and then it also asks me for the midpoint. Now the midpoint formula is here, it's over here on the right-hand side. So I'm basically gonna find the average of the X values and the average of the Y values to find this midpoint. So let's do that. Um, so that would be one plus nine over two, and one plus seven over two, which is 10 over two or eight over two, which does simplify into five, four, okay? And so that's the midpoint, five comma four. I don't need to enter the parentheses because the parentheses are already there on the screen, okay? Now for number three, 
It says the equation x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals r squared is the standard form of a circle with center of hk and radius r. That's just um, the standard information. Now for number four, so this was just definitions. There's nothing really to do. Now number four, we've got the center at zero, zero, and then we have radius of positive four. And so if I plug them into that standard form of the equation, which is here on the review, but if you were on the test, it would be here in this box, okay? And so I'm basically gonna use that formula to write the equation of this circle. So it's going to be x minus the x coordinate of the center squared plus y minus the y coordinate of the center squared equal to our radius squared. And so x minus zero is just x, y minus zero is just y, and then four squared is 16. And so this is the equation of the circle. So let's go ahead and type that in there. X squared plus Y squared equal to 16. Now let's try number five. So number five says that the center is now negative four comma five and the radius is three units. So again, following that same formula, it's gonna be x minus this x value squared plus y minus the y value squared equal to our radius squared. This double negative will actually turn this into x plus four squared and y minus five squared stays the same and then three squared is nine. And so this is the equation of the circle with that center and that um, radius. So x plus four quantity squared plus y minus five quantity squared equal to nine. Now we are talking about number six. So for number six, we have a center of one negative six and a radius of square root of 19. So we're gonna use the formula again, x minus the x coordinate of the center plus y minus the y value of the center squared equal to my radius squared. So this does not simplify, it's x minus one squared. However, these double negatives do simplify to y plus six squared. And the square root of 19 squared does simplify to just 19 because the square root and the square cancel each other out, okay? So in here, I'm gonna type in x minus one quantity squared plus y plus six quantity squared equal to 19. Mm, okay, we're gonna move on to number seven. So for number seven, we have center of four, nine, and then we have solution point of negative 121. Now, visually, you have to remember that the solution point means it's a point on the circle, okay? So after I have graphed the circle, here's the center, 
the solution point will be somewhere on this circle. Now, I don't know where it is, but it'll be somewhere on the circle. Considering that the, the center is four nine, if I'm thinking about um, like my X and Y axes here, let's say that's four and let's say this is nine, the circle is probably a lot larger than this because um, this is gonna go all the way outward to negative one and all the way up to positive 21 somewhere out there. So it's very much possible that the circle is bigger than the one I drew and you've got this point up here somewhere, okay? Um, but the radius of this circle is this distance between the solution point and the center, okay? So if I wanna figure out my radius, I need to figure out that distance, okay? So I'm gonna take the square root of second x value minus the first x value squared, second y value minus the first y value squared. We get negative five squared plus, I believe that's 12, but let me make sure, yep. So then we get 25 plus 144, which is the square root of 169, which the square root of 169 is a nice number 13. So now that I have the center and the radius now, we can go ahead and write the equation. So the equation is x minus the x value of the center squared plus y minus the y value of the center squared equal to this radius squared. Now there's nothing to simplify in the first parentheses or in the second parentheses, but 13 squared does equal 169. And so this is the equation of that particular circle. Okay. Now, number eight says that we have endpoints of a diameter. Okay, so what that means is if I kind of draw this, I have 13, which could be way out here, and negative three. And then I have one and positive 13. Apparently these are the endpoints that create my circle. So if you notice right across from each other, that's actually the diameter of the circle, right? Now, in order for us to write the equation of this circle, we have to know two things. We have to know what the center coordinates are and we have to know the radius, okay? which is just the distance between that center and one of the endpoints. I could also do the center and this endpoint and I would get the same radius, okay? But you just have to pick one, one of the points. Typically, I like to pick the one with all positives so that all the negatives and stuff don't get confusing, okay? So, but I need to find these coordinates first because I can't find the distance between these two points unless I know his coordinates. So I am gonna have to find that midpoint first. So I'm going to take the two x values and add them together and divide by two. Take the two y values, add them together and divide by two. I end up with 14 over two comma 10 over two, which tells me that the coordinates are seven and five. So seven this way and five up. Now that I know the center, I can find the radius. So the radius is going to be the distance between the center and this point here, which is positive 113. So I'm gonna, it doesn't matter which one you call the first point and which one you call the second point. I'm gonna call this point the first point and I'm gonna call that point the second point, okay? So I'm gonna take my second X value, seven, take away the X value of the first point plus the second Y value, take away the second, the first y value. 
And so then I end up with um, six squared plus negative eight squared. So I end up with 36 plus 64. This numbers just keep popping up a lot. And so I end up with 10 as my radius. So the equation will be X minus the X value of the center, seven squared, plus Y minus the Y value of the center, five, equal to R squared. And since this is the only thing that would need to be simplified, I'm just gonna erase that and write 100, okay? So in here, I'm gonna type all of that in. Oops, I forgot to get down. There we go. Okay, now number nine. So for number nine, it wants me to identify the center. So notice one thing that the, the general formula, it looks like this. Okay, so, and it tells me that the center is at H comma K and the radius is just R, okay? So that means if I have something that looks like this, Notice the pattern here, okay? If I wanna figure out the center, notice that it's negative here, but it's positive there. And it's negative here, but it's positive here. So in order for me to collect the center, I'm essentially taking the opposite signs of the numbers inside these parentheses. So the opposite sign of minus one is positive one, and the opposite sign of plus four would be negative four. And then the radius is actually the square root of whatever number is there, okay? So the square root of four in this case, which can be simplified to two. So the center would be one comma negative four and the radius would be two. And then it asked me to draw this. So all I need to do to draw it is to plot the center first so one and negative four. And then to drag, come on. Um, and then to plot another point, two units, the radius is two units. So I'm just gonna go two boxes to the right. And notice it does that. Once you plot the center, you could also have gone two boxes upward or two boxes to the left or two boxes down. You just need to make sure that the radius is that two units. Now here, same thing, we're identifying what the center is and what is the radius. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Now notice in here, there's nothing in there, right? Which means for the center, it would be zero because there's no number in there in this inside the square. It's just X being squared. Here though, the opposite of minus seven would be a positive seven. And then the radius is going to be the square root of that nine, which is a nice three. So zero comma seven and then three. And again, in order to graph it, we're gonna hit the circle we're gonna plot that center. And since the radius is three, I'm gonna go three boxes to the right. And then it does graph that for me. Okay. So that was all of the college level material on this test. Um, so there were 10 questions from the review over the college level material. So there will be five questions and the questions are gonna be very similar to these 10, okay? But you'll have five questions um, on the test, okay? Make sure you do know how to plot points and make sure you do know how to read points from a graph. So if I show you the graph and I show you a dot in a certain location, you can give me the coordinates of that point in that location, okay? 
Um, other than that, that is essentially going to make up the um, college level portion of this test, okay? Now for the rest of the, um, the rest of the test is all gonna be the developmental stuff, okay? And so although this stuff might seem a little more complicated than the first 10 questions, um, this is actually the developmental material. So this is the material that we would need to know before we can get to the future college algebra stuff, okay? Um, so we're just gonna dive right in. And I do wanna point out that I do have some rules here to help rules here, these boxes, the top one, um, steps to solving polynomial or quadratic equations by factoring, steps to solving um, radical equations. Oops, I didn't mean to mess with that. Um, steps to following quadratic type equations, and then steps to solving an absolute value equation, okay? All of these steps on how to solving these different equations, um, this information will be provided to you when you're taking the test. However, it won't be provided in future tests. So if you do have to solve a rational, a radical equation, or if you have to solve a quadratic type of equation, um, you're not gonna have these rules on future tests, okay? So I am putting them on this one only because we've been covering this material in two weeks. And I feel like, I mean, if one really tried, they could memorize this stuff in the two weeks. But typically with everything else that is on our plate, um, I don't expect everyone to memorize all of this, okay? So it's why I'm putting it here on this test. But once you've done all your homework, you've done the review, you've taken the test, the goal is mastery, right? So I'm hoping that after that point in time that you will have mastered the material enough that you shouldn't need this information in future tests, okay? Another reason why I don't do it is because if I keep putting all the formulas from all the previous tests, you're gonna be scrolling so much while you're trying to take a test and just trying to cipher through all of the information that's there, okay? Um, so it's better to just have it in case you need it, but try to memorize these things. And as we keep going further, there will be more and more and more that we'll have to essentially just memorize, okay? When you get to pre-cal and calculus, all this information has to be known. Um, you can't, you can't ever be like, oh, well, I don't remember how to solve a, a radical equation. Mm -mm. You have to already know how to do that, okay? Without having the steps for you, without having to review it, nothing, okay? So you definitely need to learn these processes. I'm spelling them out for you for this test, but in the future I won't, okay? So just letting you know, giving you fair warning, okay? Um, but since it is there for me, I am going to follow those steps. Now, just to recap, I'm gonna just read them out loud real quick, and then we'll use them to solve problems 11, 12, 13, and 14, okay? So all of those have a little house, right? They all have a radical. So I am going to be using these steps in the second box on my screen that says steps to solving, um, Oh gosh, I have typos in there. Steps to solving a radical equation. There we go, now we got it fixed. Um, so steps to solving a radical equation. One, isolate a radical with its coefficient. If there are two, choose one to isolate. Then two, apply the index of the isolated radical as an exponent on both sides of the equation. Simplify each side of the equation, then assess what type of equation you have to finish solving for the variable. Check your answers. There may be extraneous solutions, okay? So there may be um, answers, extra answers, okay? That's what extraneous means. It just means extra solutions that don't check out. So let's go ahead and begin with number 11. So there is only one radical in this equation. So I do need to get this radical by itself. Now I need to get it by itself, but the, it says with the coefficient, which means this needs to be by itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to subtract 2x. 
So then I have this positive five square root of X. And on this side, because I'm gonna keep the positive guy in the front, I'm gonna write it like this. You could have also written it like this. Both of these are equivalent. And when I, when I go to the next step, you will still end up with the same results, okay? It's just a choice on how you write it. Now, I'm gonna do step two, which says apply the index as an exponent on both sides. So my index here is a two. This is a square root and it doesn't have an obvious index. So I just filled it in with blue. And then I'm gonna take that, that and I'm gonna apply it to both sides of my equation. So I'm gonna have a square here and a square there. Now, on the left side, you have a product. You have five multiplied to the square root of X. When you have a product, you can square each of those factors individually. So I could square five and get 25. Actually, let me write it out first and then I will do the, the computation. So I can do the five squared and the square root of X squared, okay? Now on this side, I do not have a product. This three is not multiplied to two X, okay? There's a, neg a minus in the middle, which means this is two whole terms, not just one big term, okay? When it's two terms, you have to do the foiling, okay? You have to write this out as three minus two X times a second three minus two X, and then do all the distributing to simplify, okay? So on this side, I'm gonna end up with 25, the square root and the square will cancel, so it's just X. And over here, I'm gonna get nine, then negative six X, then negative six X, and then positive four X squared. So I have 25 X equal to nine minus 12 X plus four X squared. Now I have just completed step three. Step three was after you apply the exponent on both sides, simplify both sides, okay? And I have, there's only one term here, so I can't do anything with it. And there's three terms here, but none of them are like terms. So I have simplified it as much as I possibly can, okay? Now is where I do step four and I assess what kind of equation I have at this point, okay? If there were still a radical, I would have to go through all of those radical steps all over again. Since I don't have any radicals, I notice that I have X squared as my highest exponent, okay? So that means I have a quadratic. And we know that when we have quadratics, we want to have them in their general form, okay? So general form means two things. One, the terms are in descending order. And two, it means um, that it's equal to zero. So I am going to subtract 25X from both sides and I'm placing it under the like term, just like him. So I have zero and I'm gonna put these in the correct order, okay? So it have to be in descending order. So highest exponent goes first, then this would be negative 37 X and then the constant positive nine should be at the back, okay? Now from here, you can choose to solve it really one of three ways, okay? You can solve it by factoring, which is the only way, the first way that we learned, right? Or you could solve it by completing the square, which was the second least favorable method, okay? Most people do not like that method. Um, or you could apply the quadratic formula, okay? Me personally, if it looks too difficult for me to factor, and when I mean too difficult, I mean even just the slightest bit difficult for me to factor. Um, I'm going to resort to the quadratic formula because I know that that works, okay? So for me personally, I see that 37 and I'm like, huh, what? <laughs> How am I gonna get this 37, right? It's gonna take me some effort. I'm gonna have to do the AC method, do all the little factors, split the middle guy, factor the grouping, then you know continue that whole process, then set each factor equal to zero. It, it's a long process, right? Not that quadratic formula is any shorter, it's just, easier to apply, okay? So I'm gonna identify my A is four, my B is this negative 37, 
and my C is this positive nine, okay? And you do have the quadratic formula right here on your note sheet, okay? So it will be available on the test. So that's those, that is exactly what I'm going to use right now, okay? So your answers will be X equals negative of B, which is negative 37, plus or minus B squared, so negative 37 again, minus four times A times C. A is four and C is nine. The whole thing over two times A and A is four. And so the easiest way to work on these things is to simplify the front, simplify inside the house, and then simplify what's at the bottom, okay? Because I don't know if my answers are going to be imaginary, I don't know if they're gonna be real, and I don't wanna type all of this in my calculator just for the calculator to tell me, nope, it's imaginary, so I can't tell you nothing, right? So a negative and a negative will be a positive 37. And I'm just gonna type in what's inside the radical. Negative 37 squared minus four times four times nine. And I end up with one, two, two, five on the inside of the house. And underneath two times four is eight, okay? Then what you can do is you can take the square root since it's not imaginary, obviously, Let's simplify this in our calculator, okay? So 37 plus or minus the square root of one, two, two, five. And it just so happens that it's 35. Notice that the 35 does not have a house on it. So when you write it down, don't put a house on it. I've been watching some students write down their work and they keep leaving the house on the problems after they've taken the square root. That's different than if I have like square root of one, two, two, zero, and it's not a perfect square, um, well, I can't do numbers that big, but let's say 26, not 26, 24, right? Smaller number. Um, this is not a perfect square. And so your calculator does simplify it, but it shows you what comes out and what stays in, okay? And so if you do the square root of 25, it's just five. Don't write square root of five, okay? Okay. So now we've got this. Notice that there's no more radicals, no imaginaries, nothing. So we're just gonna split this into 37 plus 35 over eight, and then 37 minus 35 over eight. So let's see, 37 plus 35 is 72. And then 72 divided by eight is nine. 37 minus 35 is two divided by eight, it reduces to one fourth, okay? So I do have two solutions. I'm trying to get to the top. It doesn't look like I'll be able to go to the very, very top. So remember my two solutions are nine and one fourth. So when I go up to the top, I do need to check those answers. I'll do checking in blue just so it's not, confused with my writing in the pink. So first I'm gonna check X equal to nine. So I'm gonna plug in nine everywhere there was an X. And then I'm gonna type all of this on my calculator and see if I do in fact get three. And so notice that what's on my paper looks exactly like what's on my calculator. Don't hit enter unless it looks exactly the same. And so I get 33. That is definitely not equal to the three, right? So this one is a bad answer. I will not include that one in my final answer. Now let's check X equal to four, or I'm sorry, X equal to one fourth. So we get two times one fourth plus five uh, at square root of one fourth equal to three. Again, I'm gonna type all of that in my calculator. Two parentheses, fraction one over four, close the parentheses, plus five, square root of fraction one over four. And I do get three. 
So three does equal three, this one does check out. So my only solution is not this one. My only solution is one fourth. That is the only answer that actually works, okay? So I'm gonna type in fraction one over four. You could have also typed in 0 0.25. It does not matter which way. Okay, so, because I like to keep everything nice and neat, that problem pretty much took the whole page. I'm going to move over to the next page. Now we're gonna work on number 12. So this one is negative square root of 10 minus 5x plus two equal to x. So first step in solving a radical equation is to get the radical with its coefficient by itself. So it does have a little coefficient of one right here, negative one. It doesn't matter. I want this whole term by itself, which means I'm going to have to minus the two over. And I just like to keep the positive one in the front. So I'm gonna write x minus two, and over here, I'm just gonna have the radical. Now remember, there is a um, invisible one there. So next step, step two, is whatever index is here, which happens to be a little two, is the exponent I'm gonna to apply to the entire both sides. So notice that I put everything on the left in a big parentheses, and everything on the right in a big parentheses, okay? Now I'm gonna use that rule. I have a product here, negative one times this radical. So I can do negative one squared, and then I can do the radical squared. Over here, it's not um, one term, it's two terms. So it's not a product in between these guys, it's a subtraction between these guys. So this one, I cannot just go x squared and two squared. I have to do x minus two times another x minus two. So negative one times negative one is a positive one. And then the house and the square will cancel, leaving me with this. And here if I factor, I get these terms. Now, if I distribute this one, it's not really gonna change anything, it's still 10 minus 5x. But if I combine these two like terms on the right-hand side, I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. So now I've completed step three, which is to simplify both sides, right? So once you simplify both sides, you look at it, you reassess, what kind of equation do I have now? It is not a radical anymore, um, but I do see that x squared. So I know that it's a quadratic, okay? And for quadratics, we have to get it equal to zero in descending order, and then we can either factor it or we can use our quadratic formula. Completing the square is never gonna be my go-to ever, ever, ever. If the directions do not explicitly tell me you must complete the square, I'm not going to complete the square. That's just me, okay? If you want to do that, you are at liberty to do that, okay? But it's, I'm not going to, okay? If you do it and you get it right, perfect. You're, you're good. Um, but let's see if, if it's easy to factor or if I'm just gonna do the quadratic formula. So I first gotta get it equal to zero. So I'm gonna minus 10 and add five X to both sides, minus 10 under the other constant and the plus five X underneath the other X's. So now I won't have anything left on the left-hand side, but here, if I write them in order, X squared first, then my X's, and then my constant. This one is pretty easy to factor, actually, because I know that three times two can give me a one. But I need a positive one, which means the bigger number will be positive. And then if I need a negative six, that means that the small one would need to be a negative. So that three times negative two is negative six, and three plus negative two is a positive one, okay? Because that was easy to factor, I can just set each factor equal to zero. And so I get X equals to negative three and X equals to positive two. But we know we must um, 
that scared me. I saw it was a tiny little like, I don't know what you call that, like a little gnat. <laughs> but I saw it on the screen and I was like, I got really scared for a second. I didn't know what that was. Um, but it's okay. It's just a tiny little, not a fly, but a little tiny, tiny bug that's flying around. So let's check them. I can see my original up here. So I'm going to just check them right here. So first I'm going to check um, x equal to negative 3. So we have negative square root of 10 minus 5 times negative 3, then plus 2 equal to x, and x is a negative 3. So I'm going to type all of this in my calculator, and hopefully it does come out to equal negative 3. So negative square root 10 minus 5 parentheses negative 3 close get out of the house and then do plus two. And I do get negative three. So good, that means that this answer actually works. Now we're going to check um, x equal to two. So again, you're plugging it into that equation, plus two outside the house. And then the x again, right? The x is on this side as well. So that two will pop up over here as well. Then I'm gonna type all of that in my calculator. And since I already have the other one in there, I'm just gonna go in and change the negative three, delete the negative and change it to a positive two. Now that looks exactly like what's on my, on my paper. So I'm gonna hit enter and I do get two. So both of these solutions work, which means both of them are gonna be my answer, okay? So when I come over here to the computer, I'm going to type negative 3, comma 2. OK, number 13. OK, number 13. So for number 13, it, it is a radical. Okay, you see the little house, right? So it is a radical. So we have to isolate the radical. That means this guy, it doesn't have a coefficient, really. It's like an invisible one, but that needs to be by itself. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to minus three on both sides. So I get the cube root of 4x plus 5 equal to negative 3. Now step two said that I need to take the index and apply it as an exponent on both sides, okay? So this index is three. So that means I'm gonna cube this entire side and I'm gonna cube this entire side. On the left, the index and the power will cancel. So the house will be gone and I will just have four X plus five. Over here, parentheses negative three raised to the third power that's negative 27. There's nothing to simplify on the left and nothing to simplify on the right. So step three is pretty much automatically done for me. Step four is to reassess what kind of equation I have. I do have X, but it doesn't have an exponent. The exponent is one, right? So it's not a quadratic. This is just a linear equation. And to solve linear equations, you have to move the constant over and then divide by the coefficient. Um, oops, it's not going to be 20 anymore. It's going to be 32. Yes. And then divide by the coefficient. So I get x equals negative 8. We do have to check our answers. So we're going to check x equals negative 8. So cube root four times negative eight plus five plus three on the outside equal to zero. So I am going to plug um, this whole thing in my calculator and hopefully I do get zero. So how do we do that? We type in three. Second, the little one that looks like, I think on the black calculator has like a box and then the square root. I just cannot for the life of me find my black calculator right now. Um, 
I'm sure it's at home. I think I was using it to do my calculus three work and um, I must have left it on the counter or something. So this looks exactly like it does in the paper, right? The plus three is not inside the house and neither is it on my calculator. So I'm gonna hit enter and I do get zero, okay? So the fact that I do get zero means that this is actually a solution. And so in here, I can type in negative eight. Okay, 14, I knew it was gonna happen. Um, if you're in the face-to-face -face class, I did already tell you guys, um, but if you're in the online class, and I probably didn't tell you, but this problem, I'm not this exact problem, but a problem with two radicals will be on the test. Um, because it, it, I do see it in calculus every now and then, and I wanna make sure that when you do see it later that you're, you're prepared for it, okay? Even if you don't remember every single little thing, um, at least you have seen it before. And so it's easier to refresh your memory than to like try to teach you something brand new, okay? So I am gonna follow those steps. Now the steps say to isolate one of the radicals. And here, since both of the radicals are positive, you really have a choice on which one to isolate. You don't wanna do the problem multiple times just to show you every variation of how the problems can be solved. Um, but just understand that as long as you're following rules, um, you do have choices when it comes to mathematics of what you can do. You just can't make up stuff. <laughs> It has to be a specific rule or a specific property or a specific um, set of steps that you're following, okay? Um, so I do have to isolate one. For me personally, I probably would isolate this one just because I, I know I'm going to have to move this over. And when I do and I square that whole side, I'm going to have to foil that out. And I'd rather foil out this one with a little bitty baby square root than this one that has two terms. That's just my preference because I can foresee what's happening, okay? If you decide to move that one over, so be it. It will look a little bit longer, but it's still fine, okay? So I'm actually gonna subtract this one over. If it were negative, I would add it over. Um, just so that you can see, because I don't want you to freak out if you do have a long one, what to do, okay? So remember, if it's plus, you subtract. If it's a subtraction originally, you need to add. And then on this side, you have two minus this radical. And I know many of you are gonna do this even though this one's the longer way. So I'm just gonna do it the longer way just so that you have it as an example. Then I have to do step two, which is once this guy's by himself, you're gonna take that little index and you're gonna apply it as an exponent on both sides of the equation. So notice everything gets squared, not just individual people, the whole left side and the whole right side gets um, squared. So here the house comes off and I get X. Over here, I have to actually write this out twice because it's two terms. And so two times two is four. Two times negative house is going to be negative two and the house. Negative the house times two is going to be another negative two times the house. You cannot really multiply together things that don't have a house and things that do have a house. So they literally just get written next to each other. But normally we like the numbers out of the house in the front. Okay. And then finally, negative house times another negative house is gonna give me a positive of that house squared because it's the same thing times itself, right? Which is the definition of a square. These two both have houses. So I owe somebody, if I owe somebody two houses and then I owe somebody else two more houses, that means I owe a total of four of those houses. And then here the square root and the square will cancel, leaving me with x minus 29. I'm almost done, but this four and this 29 can be simplified.
So four minus 29 will give me minus 25. Now, the left-hand side is simplified and the right-hand side is simplified. None of these are like terms, so I can't go any further on the right-hand side. So I'm assessing it, and when I assess it, I realize that I still have a radical, okay? So then I gotta go through all of those steps all over again. Step one, isolate the radical with its coefficient. So this guy and his coefficient need to be left alone, which means I need to move this guy over and I need to move over the 25. So when I rewrite this, the x's will cancel and I'll have this positive 25. They're gone from here and all I have is negative four square root of x minus 29. Again, second step, take this index and apply it to the whole left side and the whole right side as an exponent. On the left-hand side, I get 625. On the right-hand side, I get negative four squared and then the square root squared. So this is positive 16 and this will no longer have a house. Then if I distribute my 16, I get 16x minus 464. I notice that now that I've simplified everything, if I reassess it, it's actually just a linear equation. So I need to move my constant to the other side. And 625 plus 464 is 1089. And then finally, I can divide by my coefficient. And that divided by 16 is apparently 68.0625. It's probably a fraction, but as long as the decimal doesn't keep going and going and going, you can use the decimal answers. However, Mm -mm -mm, I almost forgot. We have to check our answers because it could be that that's a bad answer. And then what I type in the box would be no solution. Or it could be that it's a good answer. And so then my answer is 68.0625, okay? So we definitely need to check this response. So let's check. And since it's only one, I'm just gonna go right into it. 68.0625 plus 68.0625 minus 29 equal to two. So I'm gonna type this whole thing and see if it actually equals two. Square root of 68.0625, get out of the house plus sign, and then square root of 68.0625 minus 29. And it is not, did you see that? It is not equal to two. We got 14.5, which is not the same thing as that. So what does that tell us? It tells us that this answer is a bad answer. It's the only answer I got and it was bad. So what do I type in the box? You're gonna type in no solution. If it worked, then that would have been what I typed in the box, but it did not. So we're just gonna type in no, and it looks like they have it in all caps. So I'm gonna use all caps. Okay, moving on. I think I am already approaching about, about an hour, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is after number 16 is I'm going to stop this recording and then I'm going to uh, start up another video, okay? Just so that there's not too much in one sitting. I mean, it's one sitting for me because I'm still going to be here recording, but <laughs> at least the videos are, are separated, okay? So let's see. Number 15 says this. Okay, 
Now, again, you have choices on how you can do this. You can turn these into radicals and solve them using the steps for radicals. You can, you absolutely can. I did not show you to do that, but you can. As long as you do it correctly, it is completely possible to solve this equation that way, okay? And what do I mean by that? I mean that we know that fraction exponents mean radicals. So this is a three cube root of x to the one power. The next term is a four times the cube root of x to the second power. And you could very much get one of these radicals by itself, apply the cube on both sides, which is not gonna be fun because cubing means you have that thing times itself times itself again, not fun. So this is not the way I recommend that you solve it, but it can be done, okay? Um, what we talked about is that whenever you have a problem like this, you definitely want to make sure that um, it's in its general form. So that means it has to be equal to zero and it means it has to be in descending order. So this term has the highest exponent. Two thirds is more than one third. So that term should actually be in the front. And then the positive three X to the one third should be behind it. And then finally our constant. Once it's all in, in its general form, then according to, um, in order for me to know whether or not it's a quadratic type, and I think I wrote it in here. So in order for me to know that it's a quadratic type, it does need to look like this. And whatever the exponent is here in the middle, the one in the front should be two times that exponent, okay? And if you look at mine, I have one third here and two times one third is actually two thirds. So I do fit the criteria to be a quadratic type of equation. Now, I already got it in general form, but then notice what it says here, let u equal the middle expression and do not include the coefficient. So, and for my problem, I'm gonna say, let u equal this expression without the coefficient, do not put the coefficient. So it's just x to the one third. Then the rule on the sheet of paper says to square both sides of this equation. So if I take u and I square it, and I take x to the one third and I square it, here it's just u squared, but here you multiply your exponents. And one third times two, excuse me, is two thirds. So now instead of writing x to the one third, we're gonna write u. And instead of writing x to the two thirds, we're gonna write u squared. So here's the part where I'm actually gonna substitute them in. So the x to the two thirds becomes u squared plus three, the x to the one third becomes u. And then if you could factor that nice and quickly, super fast, then go ahead and do it. Um, I probably could, but I'm not gonna assume that everyone could, okay? So if I cannot factor this or it's taking too much time or too much brain energy to do that, you can go ahead and just do the quadratic formula. So in order for me to do the quadratic formula, my A is gonna be four, my B is gonna be three, and my C is gonna be negative seven. So negative of three, plus or minus three squared minus four, four and negative seven, all over two times four. Again, I'm following the quadratic formula. Notice that whatever the variable is here, that is the variable that I will use there, okay? So then I get u equals negative three plus or minus, and then I have, um, three squared minus four parentheses, four parentheses, negative seven. I get 121. And two times four at the bottom is eight. Um, there is a square root of 121. It's just 11. 
So then I get negative three plus 11 over eight and negative three minus 11 over eight. So negative three plus 11 is eight. And then negative three minus 11 is negative 14. So if I simplify that, I get one and negative seven fourths. Okay, so these are my two responses for u. u equals each of these, okay? So u equals one and u equals negative seven fourths. But the problem was not given to me with u's. They don't care what u equals, they wanna know what x equals, okay? So I have to back sub now. What was u? What did you represent? You represented x to the one third. So really it's x to the one third that equals one. And the same thing here, it's x to the one third that equals the negative seven fourths. Now, we have talked about it in the past too, that you had an exponent rule that says if you have um, anything with an exponent and you apply the reciprocal of that exponent, you do just get the base by itself, okay? So because of that exponent rule, I'm gonna use that to solve these equations. So if I just wanna know what X is, I'm gonna apply the reciprocal of this exponent, which is three or three over one. And then I'm gonna apply that same exponent on this other side. That will cause these to cancel, leaving me with just X. And one to the third power is still one. Similarly, I'm gonna do that on this side, use the reciprocal and that same exponent on the other side. So here, this would cancel each other out, just giving me X. And then let's see about that thing there. So we have parentheses, fraction, negative seven over four, close the parentheses, exponent of three, fraction one. And it does tell me it's negative three, four, three over 64. Okay, so these are my two solutions, but as always, we know we should probably check our answers. Okay, so I'm going to check them into the original. So first I'm going to check X equal to one. I get three, one to the one third plus four, one to the two thirds, and it should equal seven. So I'm gonna type all of that in my calculator. Plus four parentheses, one close the parentheses, raise, oops, delete, raise it to the two over three. Looks exactly like it does on my paper. I'm gonna hit enter and I get seven, which does equal seven. So we're good there. Now we're gonna check um, X equals negative three, four, three over 64. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in there. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to the front and then I'm going to hit fraction. Now on the top, I don't want one. I want negative three, four, three. And at the bottom, I want 64. Now over here, same thing. Um, fraction, let me go delete that one and do negative three, four, three over 64. And when I type all of that in the calculator, I get seven, which does match what's over here. So that one also checks out. So it just so happens that both of them are my solutions. So I'm gonna type both of those in this box over here. Okay.
do the last one, 16, the last one for this part of the video. We have x minus 2 raised to the 3 halves equal to 27. So this problem really is kind of like the last bit of the last problem. So um, whatever that exponent is, if I want to get rid of this exponent, I have to apply the reciprocal exponent, so 2 over 3. But what I do to one side, I must also do to the other side. So on this side, when you do apply the reciprocals, you they cancel and you just end up with the x minus two. Whereas over here, 27 raised to the two over three exponent. Oh, wow, it comes up to a nice number nine. And then if I solve for x, we get that x equals 11. We do need to check. So check your answer for sure. 11 minus two to the three halves, does that equal 27? Let's see, parentheses, 11 minus two raised to the three halves. And I do get 27, so it does check out. And so then this would be the answer that I type in the box. Now we're getting into the absolute value equations and then some more quadratic formulas. So I'm going to stop the video here and I will resume with a second video.